A mother once said to her little girl, do you remember the time you fainted in preschool? Well, the little girl had only been about four years old when she was in preschool, and she said, oh, yes, Mommy. And do you remember what color dress you were wearing that day? Oh, yes. You said it was red, and it was red, wasn't it? And do you remember how embarrassed you were at that time? Oh, yes, Mommy. I remember that, too. Well, in fact, the mother hadn't even been in town, and the little girl never fainted. But it was very interesting how this little girl had a memory of something that hadn't even happened, and now so did the mother. This is what we're talking about today on This Life, autobiographical memory. Let's discuss it a little bit more. As we look at the stories we tell today, I want to share some facts with you. Our earliest memories are usually from around five years old. Five? five. That's, that's kind of pretty old, yeah. yeah. Early significant events, stressful or happy, can create memories before the age of five. Hmm. We can remember things that actually never happened. Like this situation. situation. That's right. Traumatic memories are not necessarily related to the level of trauma. And depression can cause memories to be fuzzy. Hmm. So those are our five facts about the stories we tell. Hmm. Well, let's talk about memory. I'm going to show a couple of slides and just uh, what, how it starts, when it starts. Uh, the first slide, there are several things that affect the, several things that affect the formation of memory. One is age. Uh, like you said, Dilla, some people have uh, memories. Most people have their first memory at the age of five, but some people have it earlier, three, even two, or younger, if there's been a significant event. Another thing that can affect memory is parenting. So if you have a parent who's very expressive, like you were, Barbara, in, in your um, discussion earlier, a mother who talks a lot about the story to with her children, they will tend to remember it differently. Mm -hmm. Third is the event itself. An event that's traumatic or very exciting, anything that arouses lots of emotion will tend to be uh, more well remembered. And that leads to the fourth one, and that is the emotion around an event. Um, if you have a lot of emotion, you'll tend to remember it. Mm. Uh, four, fifth is rehearsing the event. So if you have an event that maybe wasn't that significant, but you all start telling stories over around the table over mm -hmm. and over, it becomes a significant event. And sometimes something can become very significant that really wasn't all that significant to begin with. The next one is pictures, videos, storytelling. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you look at yourself in a picture, and later on you can't remember, do I really remember it, or is it the picture I remember? Mm -hmm. And the last one is attachment style. If you have a good, secure attachment, you'll tend to have more crisp memories than if it is insecure or avoidant. Now, what I'd like to do is talk about uh, what happens in a memory. Here you have a child that's, that's flying a kite, and this child was bit by a dog, and they have fear. But the problem is, uh, in time, if, if they don't talk about that memory and get those issues separated out, they will begin to have fear over kite flying itself, even when there isn't a dog mm -hmm. present. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the power of storytelling is here in this slide. So where first you have a child flying a kite that was bit by a dog, and now they have a f their fear of kite flying, if, you, if that child talks about that story with parents or with friends, they can get to where that the the there is no fear around the kite flying itself because they begin to realize that the fear is really around the dog, <coughs> mm -hmm, not the kite mm -hmm. flying, and not just every dog, but around a specific, specific dog under specific conditions. conditions. Yeah. Okay. So from that, let's go to this scenario. Bill and Rita have been married for 40 years. Very often, mostly when they have company, Bill will begin to tell a story, a story and Rita will listen dumbfounded before responding. So this is an older couple. <laughs> You're laughing already. <laughs> You've seen this before. Yes. All right. Um, very often, uh, so Bill will begin to tell a story. Rita will listen dumbfounded before responding. Bill, it didn't happen like that. Bill will get frustrated and say, yes, it did, Rita. Are you calling me a liar? I was there, and everything I'm saying is the truth. Rita will just shake her head and turn to someone near her and say, I was there too, and I'm here to tell you it didn't happen like that. 
Bill will later approach Rita and ask her to stay out of his stories. I hate it when you correct me in front of people, he often tells her. Feeling hurt, they often go to bed frustrated. Mm. That is sad. Well, this is interesting. I've, I've had so many couples say, say that there is one absolute interpretation yes. of what happened, yes. and they both have to agree on it because they, <clears throat> they both feel that if they have different ideas and different feelings, then one of them is not correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's or one of them is lying. Yes, even. is lying. So, and I was just talking to a student this last week, and she said, "I remember all these things, but I, I don't remember the details. I just remember the emotional feelings I had when these things happened." Mm -hmm. And her husband is someone who remembers all the details, mm -hmm. and he'll say, "What? How can you not remember that? It was right there." And she's thinking about how she was feeling, feeling. and so both of those stories are true. But they only talk in one particular language. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that feeds into this mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. for, the, for these two. Uh, it's perspective. I often say, or I've, for years now I've been saying, there are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, and what really happened. <laughs> because, and no one knows what really happened. And, and no, no one, one knows, knows what, what really, really happened. happened. Because we're going to tell the stories from our perspective. Sure. And if we're good storytellers, we're going to embellish it so that we look like the hero <laughs> or the victim, depending on, you know, which story we're so, telling. So then do, we, do, then do we remember it in the embellished way that we told it? And do we integrate that into the truth? Or, I mean, because we're talking about memory here, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So do we remember the embellished way? I think That some, we, makes us come out like a like hero? hero, yeah. I uh -huh. think so. It depends on, on which story is being told and who but, is telling the story. You said the word embellished. I think you don't even know that you're embellishing. You actually experience it a certain way, and that's the story you tell. Now, I know some storytellers. Part. <laughs> no, but the, but the storytellers actually experience my, sorry, my <laughs> father is an amazing storyteller, uh -huh. but I think he lives life that way. Mm. Okay. You know, when he's struggling with a fish that big on the end of the line, in his mind, he's, <laughs> you know, the great captain on the ship, and the fish is this big. And, and that's how he's experiencing it. Hmm. So are you suggesting then in this couple that they're just, mem they're just remembering things differently? I think they experience it differently, differently. at the time. Mm -hmm. And they therefore remember it differently. They remember it. And then each they, remembers it as it happened, which is different from, from, each, other. from each other. From each other. So what do you do with a couple like this? I mean, how do you... I mean, I don't want to get into couple dynamics, but right. I mean, this is this is really interesting because I've heard, I've I've seen people do this at parties, mm -hmm. you know, where where they'll say, oh, my husband and I do this. He'll say, honey, tell how we met. Oh no, you tell it. You tell it better. No, you tell it. And I remember different things than he does. Mm -hmm. And so I think, do, 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 do our listeners want to hear his version of how we met or my version of how we met? <laughs> Which one is more interesting? <laughs> I think mine is <laughs> Well, see, that's <clears throat> the thing. A storyteller can take <clears throat> nothing and make an exciting story about it. And you think they're lying, but they're not lying. They, that's how it was. Well, I think a story is a window into how a person's mind works yes. and what kind of person they are. Because you'll hear people say, well, there was this cat and it ran across the road and uh, went into the barn. And you think, well, la-di-da. Mm -hmm. And then you have someone say, there was this black and white cat with a big yellow eye and a mm -hmm. green eye. Mm -hmm. And it tiptoed carefully to the edge of the road, and it looked both. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and do, and yeah. somebody who m remembers all the details is going to seem to me to be a lot more interesting of a person than someone just says, well, the cat ran across the road. What strikes me about this couple is it's been 40 years. Mm. That's a lot of nights. 40, 40 years. years. And so a woman thinking, thinking her husband's a liar. liar. <laughs> you know, and at some point, I'm wondering, you know, this might be who he is. This is, you know, so don't take it so personally. You know, just go with the story. Go with the, go along with the ride. You know, go along with it. Enjoy it for what it is. It's a story from his perspective. But she has the right to say, don't include me in yes, your stories. She does. she does. If I am in your story, give that character a different name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, yes, I know couples who do that. Really? Oh, yeah. absolutely. The wife will say, if the story is about me, don't say it's about me. Give the character a different mm -hmm. name. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think even some pastoral families, the, 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 the rule is don't tell stories about the family. Exactly. At church. No, make it up about someone make else. Make it up about someone well, else. Well, I guess I'm wondering why this whole topic is, is important. I mean, what, 
what's the salience of this in, in our daily lives? Because I'm, I'm hearing about it. I, I have my own ideas, my own memories of what it, what it means. But I'm curious to know from you both, why is this a real critical thing to talk about? I'll tell a story. Tell a story. Please. I remember the details of my father teaching me how to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. He t I can remember, in fact, I went back just the other day. Our house is still not too far from here, and the, the old walnut trees are still, of course, in my mind, it was a great grand house, but it was actually very tiny. <laughs> but I remember he put his hand on the seat and on the handlebar, and I wobbled on the bike. And then I said, what are you going to do, Daddy? He says, I'm not going to let you go until you're safe. And when you're up mm -hmm. and riding and you're safe, then I'm going to let you go but it's going to be so much fun, you won't even realize that I'm not there, and I'll be running right beside you. I mean, I now, did it happen exactly like that? I don't know, but that's what I remember. What is it that I remember there? I remember that my dad was going to be honest. Mm -hmm. I remember that he, wasn't go he was going to teach me new things, but he wasn't going to hurt me through the teaching, and he was going to be by my side. Do you know how many times I've thought of that event when I do went mm -hmm. new and tried mm -hmm. new things after that? It's that picture of my dad there, you know, and I think we use hmm. our future, we, our past informs our future, and if you don't have a past, if you don't have memories, or if you have memories that are negative, Absolutely. it informs the future in ways that aren't helpful. That's really interesting. I, I, can, I can vouch for that idea because I know someone who had really negative early mm -hmm. memories, just a horrible home life, and and he looks at everything now as yeah. a catastrophe waiting Absolutely. to happen. Yeah. So maybe is it true then that our memories can kind of set the stage for the rest of our lives? Oh, you hear the voice. I hear my father's yes. voice. I won't let you go uh -huh. until uh -huh. you're safe. Uh -huh. You know, I hear that uh -huh. all the time in my memory. That's interesting. You know, you talked, Dillis, one of the facts that you said was that um, the memories that we have well, we typically start having memories around the age of five. five. Uh -huh. And I, we were sharing before the, mm -hmm. the taping here that um, I, one of my first memories was about 17, 18 months. And it was because of a traumatic incident where I was almost burned to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can remember being in a white enamel crib with a lid on it wow. and at the end of a long haul. And it was just a flash, but I do remember that. And that, I think, set the stage for kind of being isolated and being kind of on my own and mm -hmm. not expecting anybody to be there to help me. Mm -hmm. And as much as I hate to think of that, I think that has framed a lot of issues for me in my life. Mm -hmm. So I wonder then if we need to look at what our early stories tell us about ourselves and life in general and our relationships. Absolutely. And I think it comes out even more when you have children. Mm. Yes. Because you, 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 you parent based on your memory. Oh, good point. That's right. If you're not intentional about learning new things. Uh -huh. You know, um, we did something for a friend of mine last night called a mother blessing where we actually took the time, about 10 or 15 mothers, and answered her questions hmm. that she wanted to know about parenting. And hmm. then we spent time to pray with her. And one of the things that kept coming up around the room, what would you do differently? What would you do? To, what, what would you change? And you're, you're realizing that if we don't spend the time to read and learn, new things, we're going to go from the old things. Mm. Yes, and then right. our memory of the old things right. cannot Guys, always be counted right. on mm -hmm, to be accurate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so with my two-year-old, I look at her and I think she's willful. And a friend of mine said, why do you think that's a bad thing? She said, what have you ever tried to do, Dillis, that you've never accomplished? <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, that's a good thing. But I, because my here, seeing that behavior in her, right. my memory of that is this sense of, oh, she needs to be, I need to, to make sure she follows what she's supposed to do and do what she's supposed to do. And I'm trying so hard to teach her how to know when to be willful. Instead of seeing yeah. it as determination. De determination. Yeah. And when she said that to me, I went, my memory of my own self, yeah. it, it's, my, it's the, the voices that I hear, the stories sure, that I carry yes. with me point. that are yeah. shaping the way uh -huh. I'm treating her That's without right, huh? realizing that all of them have not been bad. Yes. Or you think of relationships. You get out of a relationship and you're going into a new one and you keep rehearsing what didn't work in mm -hmm. that old relationship mm -hmm. and you're yes. so afraid. You know, well, that person said this. I don't want to mm -hmm. make that mistake again. You mm -hmm. end up doing it again just mm -hmm. because that's the memory mm -hmm. that you're rehearsing, you know, mm -hmm. and how, how do you shape? And this was, I think, is so powerful about memories. You shape a memory differently by talking about it. Mm -hmm. So I might sit here and talk to you all about a memory and you might look at me and say, well, what was so bad about that? You think, what, really? It's not bad? 
Seems bad to me. <laughs> so the memory you know? can change according to who else is putting oh, in, it, giving who, you input giving on context. it. Oh, and, interesting. and that's why children who are abused mm -hmm. do much better when they talk quickly mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. that abuse because then a parent or that adult adds their part, mm -hmm. which then that changes That you're not guilty. Story. You're not yeah. guilty. It's mm -hmm. not your fault. Yeah. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. Interesting. That's the scary part, though. Is that others change your memories, you know? <laughs> yeah. There was actually a study by Elizabeth Loftus about uh, going into a mall and where, you know this better than I do. I'm afraid I'm going to get it all mixed up because I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but isn't it that, that there were some people that came out of a mall and um, she had a confederate there to, uh, you know, somebody there to say, oh, do you remember seeing such and such a person in the mall? And there was no such person, but the, oh, he was over there by the by the kiosk, and he mm. was wearing a bright orange shirt. Do you mm. remember seeing him? Uh, no. Well, you walked right past him. You must have looked at him. Oh, well, him? Oh, yeah. And and people started to recollect something that they never actually mm. saw, mm -hmm. which can can mean that the power of suggestion can be very strong. Absolutely. That's mm. why police mm. are always looking for more than one witness to a crime. Sure. Because That's everyone right. remembers it mm -hmm. from a different mm -hmm. perspective, a different angle. Mm -hmm. You know. I think there's some research really interesting about mothers who are very expressive with their boys specifically, girls too, but the research was about boys. Whereas mothers, w mothers who talk in detail with their boys about their memories mm -hmm. early in their mm -hmm. lives turn out to be boys that can be more expressive with their mm -hmm. emotions. And I, I, I don't know what the connection is there, but they're learning to talk. Mm -hmm. And so the mothers mm -hmm. will say, so why don't you tell me what we did today? We went to the zoo. Yes, and what else? Well, that's all. Well, what did you do at the zoo? <laughs> well, and then what, what did you feed the camel? You know, they go through all these little details, and those boys end up growing up being able mm. to express emotions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I know their wives are very happy. And their wives very are happy. very, very happy. happy. <laughs> do you know, yeah. well, one of the things that we used to do on Friday nights at our house was to sit around the table. We ha always had lentil stew and brown bread. That mm. was just our Friday night meal. And then we would, we would hear my parents tell stories of how, you know, each of us was born and how excited they were. And we'd have the same stories over and over. over. And, over. and we never got tired of it. But um, I'm thinking what you said is that my brothers grew up to be very uh, emotionally in tune mm -hmm. and very, very, um, yeah, I guess attuned would be the way to their wives, to, to women in general. One of the things about the Old Testament that one of our teachers shared with us when we were in seminary was that God sees and knows, He mm. hears and remembers. Mm. When you go mm. through Genesis and you look at Exodus and you look at just Joshua and you continue, it's this God who is, who is always there. He's watching. He knows what's going on. When you call out to me, I will hear you. I'll remember what I said I would mm. do. Mm -hmm. And if that is something that we can channel, and we can not channel but absorb, you know, in our, in our relationship, in our walk with God, it helps us to know that we're not. Just as you have this sense of, confidence from your father being there that you trusted him that he wouldn't leave you that's what happens when you memorize scripture mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. learn the stories and you can retell the stories mm -hmm. which God tells us to do he told the children of Israel tell your children tell them the stories when they get up when they go out you know when they come in tell mm -hmm. them what I've done for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. because it's the storytelling that reminds you and roots you and grounds you, you in this forget. sense you never yeah, forget they stay with mm -hmm. you I, I, one of the best stories I ever heard was about death a child asking about death and the parents said, you know how when you go to sleep in the car and then your father picks you up and carries you to the room, tucks you in, but you don't know about it. It's just that when you wake up, you're, you're in a different place and you wonder, how did I get here? <laughs> but there was something very, very comforting mm -hmm, about being mm -hmm. cared for mm -hmm. in that, that process mm -hmm. of, of death. That you don't forget that story. Yeah. Sure. You, you know, it's different yeah. than saying, oh, death is, you know. Sure. Yeah. But the, what about stories that are not accurate that we tell about ourselves? Like, hmm. I, like, let's say I have a story about myself, like, I am so ineffective that I've failed at two relationships, or, uh, you know, stories that mm -hmm. aren't accurate about oneself. How do you get rid of those? Boy, I think that's why it's so important to talk to other people because, like you said, they give input, they change, they shift the meaning, they shift the story. Um, and I think people who, actually this is, I never thought of this till this moment, but people who get depressed are people who are most isolated mm -hmm. and who tend to isolate themselves. And the more they're able to talk and kind of come out of that, 
out of the shadows, yeah. so to mm -hmm. speak, mm -hmm. then they can get a reality check with someone else. Because I remember there were times when I was growing up, I thought, oh, I am the most inarticulate soul on the face of the earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I would stumble over words yeah. or, I, you know, and then my students say, oh, you know, Dr. Hernandez, if I could talk like you, and I think, what? <laughs> and, and I think that when you get reality checks with other people and you don't isolate yourself, I think you can correct some of those things. Mm -hmm. And part of it, too, is actually saying those things out loud. Yes, I think so. Because mm -hmm. many of us carry that tape in our head and we're just constantly talking and we're hearing that voice telling us, oh, you're too this or you're too that or you're too this. You'll never be this. You'll never be that. And, you, you know, and it's something. But the moment you start saying it out loud, at least someone can say to you, well, why would you say something like that? Uh -huh. yeah. That's not uh -huh. true. Yeah. You know, and, and that helps to reshape the story mm -hmm. because now you're hearing another voice. I mm -hmm. think there needs to be a lot more storytelling in our country. I think we look at TV mm -hmm. instead of telling the family yes. stories yes. and um, blessing our children with yes. the stories of how valuable they are mm -hmm. and I think this really forms some of their their opinions about mm -hmm. who they are in the world absolutely, absolutely. so uh, we have we have some email questions oh is that, is that what we have <laughs> we do I have. saw the looks on your faces <laughs> we have let me just you're on Barbara here here's a couple questions that that have we have by email why is it that three children who grew up in the same household have three different stories about what their family life was growing up Mercy. yep have you ever heard that oh all the time ask my sister <laughs> <laughs> well, ask my siblings. We, you might have thought we come from three different planets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it goes back to experience. You know, the things that shaped, marked those experiences, what, were, what was happening. And birth order. Birth order is a big one. Personality type. Mm -hmm. yes. Some personalities aren't story people. They're fact people. Yes. And they, they want to get through the facts of the mm -hmm, day. Mm -hmm. And they, there's, there's not a story there, mm -hmm, but they can't mm -hmm. be faulted. Right, for that's their, just the way they that's think. That's the way they, they think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And more depressed people aren't going to see the crispness of mm -hmm, life. They're mm -hmm. go like if I'm depressed and you're not, we're going to look at the same thing from a completely different that's perspective. Right. And rewrite the whole thing. And rewrite yeah, absolutely. the whole thing. Absolutely. That's actually, that's what a lot of depressed people do. They yeah. live a pretty good life, then they have a bout of depression and they look back through this big it's filter of all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mm -hmm. whole thing is a wreck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, number two. What do you call it when a person tells the same story about something bad that happened to them years ago? And why do people do that, especially when they see my eyes glaze over when they start the story again? Exclamation point, point, point. <laughs> That's called repetition. <laughs> <laughs> no, but isn't that annoying, though, mm -hmm. when someone so tells the same story? So why do people even do that? Why do they do that? That's a question. Maybe they want someone to help them reshape the story, and no one ever has. It's just this, did I tell you what happened to me? And the eyes blaze over. But we you know, I engage. think some people have nothing but their stories. And it's been said that people can become a prisoner of their stories. Mm. And so their story defines them. And by George, they're going to just be that every single time. And they yeah. can't think of themselves in any other way. And they're going to prove it to you. Mm. Well, and, and there's a researcher, McAdams, that says that everybody has a narrative. Mm. And they follow that narrative in their lives. And he says one of the, the most desperate type of narrative is someone who tells this kind of story, how they barely made it through life, but mm. they did. They just made mm. it by the hair of their chin. That person that tells that sort of desperate mm -hmm. story, and you've heard people do oh, that. all the time. Everything is about how they just barely made it. He said that is the most deprived type of life, type of narrative, mm. is someone who resorts to that kind of story. Well, it has a huge effect on people that are listening to oh, that. Yeah. It's devastating to listen to that. And how do people, uh, thinking of that, perspective, what happens when they hear about the story of salvation? The story that God loved so much. But it's still desperate. It's they still were desperate. hopeless and the Lord lifted them out of the out of their desperation. My, my, my. So they my. feed even the narrative of God into See, that into their narrative. Story. Wow. Wow. Now not everyone does that's that. That's not that right. But, but I think that would be the tendency yeah. if that's how you frame life. Uh, let's see. Okay. I need help with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a best time, the best time going out to a concert or something, after which he thanks me and tells me at the time what a wonderful time he had with me. But then a couple weeks later, he'll tell me he really didn't enjoy it. 
and that he's unsatisfied with how we interacted or what we did. What's going on here? He's a split personality. <laughs> split. split personality. <laughs> Two different people showing up. So, so I've had people do this before. You, you go out and you have a wonderful time, and a couple weeks later you hear them say to someone else, oh, it's okay, really didn't, didn't the meet story my changes. Needs. The story changes. What makes a story change like this? That's what I would ask. You know, that's well, strange. That's a different story than you told me last week. Did <laughs> like, something change? There? Yeah. Were yeah. you there? I yeah. thought we agreed that it yeah. was okay. I thought we agreed we that it was, it was a fun time. We thought it was a fun time. What happened? Yeah. Is, yeah. is, is her brother just telling her that because he wants to make her feel happy? And then well, after he processes question. and reflects on his memory of the situation, he might go, you know what, I really didn't like it. Yeah, but why would you even say such a thing to someone? It's interesting. I mean, framing the... The relationship, it really cast a, a cloud over the, the relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, last question here. Is there such a thing as remembering only the feelings experienced during an event rather than the details? We talked about okay. this. Mm -hmm. I think I'm like that. I usually have much better recall if I can remember the emotional aspects of something that happened, but it makes me feel like I'm losing my mind because I don't remember the details. Hmm. There's one thing we haven't talked about that I think is important here is that and Barbara, you and I have talked about this in our careers. Memories that we have before the age of memory are all emotional, nonverbal mm. memories. The sadness about those is you can't shape them. Mm. You can only shape the actual memories that you have, not the emotional memories. And that's why memories before the age of five are so powerful mm -hmm. because they can't be, re well, it's very difficult right. to reshape them. And you can have tactile memories too. Right. Mm -hmm. Memories of someone holding you in a certain way or being rough with you or hurting you. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So memories are powerful. It's really important. And it's hard, you know, it's wonderful to have friends that can help you reshape your mm -hmm. memories. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. Good families to hang out with. Good therapist. Yeah. Good, th <laughs> <laughs> good therapist. Good brothers and sisters, right. friends. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting questions, aren't they? Absolutely. Well, memories set the stage for our future. And we've also talked about today that memories um, are shaped and can be reshaped when we talk with others. We're hoping from our, our conversation today that you will tell a story and remember your own stories and tell someone, give them the opportunity to, to um, experience what you've experienced from your perspective. Some may say that the details aren't the same, but that's okay. It's just telling the story. And as Barbara said, you know, we don't tell enough stories. We're, we're always spending time mm -hmm. doing things, but not spending time sitting around, enjoying our life stories together. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us today on This Life.